and now we are recording. So good morning again, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to see so many of you online already uh, at, the, at the time we're starting. Uh, so my name is Melissa Miklos. I am communication officer at Federen. Uh, I'm here today in my capacity of uh, communication leader of the c 50 project. We have joined forces with uh, the Pentahelix project because both our projects are ending and these are actually our, fi our final conferences. And we, of course, reached out to uh, like-minded initiatives and organizations today uh, to propose you an ambitious program related to uh, supporting local and regional authorities in climate and energy planning. And this first session, as you can see, on my screen uh, is about collaboration processes and multi-level governance. So without further ado, I would like to welcome our first guest. Uh, we are very happy to have with us today Giacomo Luciani from DG Region, the European Commission, who is the contact person for sustainable growth in the unit macro regions, transnational, um, interregional inter and external cooperation enlargement. So Giacomo, thank you again. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Melissa. Thank you very much for this uh, invitation. Uh, first of all, I, I just hope the connection will be fine because I have to say, Melissa, I lost you for a while. So don't hesitate to tell me if there is a problem with the connection. I really hope it's not the case. So uh, far, it's okay. Perfect. So let's hope that fingers crossed. Uh, thank you again, really. I have to say this, this event is very interesting. And I thank you also because my job to do this short uh, introductory speech uh, is very will be very easy uh, because we are we are speaking about uh, uh, effective collaboration processes. But I have to say already the fact that you have organized this event this shows already that you all of you know a lot about it. So I will I will just try to maybe bring to you a bit what is my experience now a bit. Quite a, quite a long one dealing with cooperation and in particular uh, in combination with sustainable growth in general. Uh, first of all, the, maybe the first uh, key message I have for you is that, of course, all of you that are here, I'm sure, are aware how cooperation is not only an added value, but most of the time probably is the only option we have to do something or to solve problems. Now, if we speak about in particular environmental challenges uh, or climate energy related challenges that all of you know very well. But what for me always is important, maybe this is you know, also my a bit lawyer background uh, that plays a role here, is that of course, all these processes, it's important to take into account the legal or policy basis. Uh, when when uh, we, we start these processes. Uh, I make just one example, although, of course, most of you, I, I'm sure, know it very well. But for the, for example, for the regulation uh, on the governance of the Energy Union and Climate Action, as you know, there is a, a, an article dedicated to regional cooperation, Article 12, where clearly says how important is this regional cooperation in order to achieve the objective, the targets, the contribution related, for example, to the uh, integrated energy and climate uh, plan uh, of, the, of the member states. So this, this short key message, because for me is always important. When you do something, look uh, for a, also for a, if there is a strong legal and, and policy uh, basis for this. Second key message from my side, uh, of course, all, all of you know very well, and I see the project also that are uh, organizing this event today uh, are uh, already a very good example. But cooperation can be different. Uh, we can have really different kind of cooperation. We can, it can go from just a sharing of experiences to trying to establish a stable network to even try to do joint investment together, for example, to build joint infrastructure but what is important is not you know the the the, the kind of cooperation it's not i think a cooperation a kind of cooperation that is more important than the other what is important is that it suits your purposes your objectives this is something really really i i, I learned with my experiences and for this of course what is important to this uh it's to 
choose also the right tool uh, to, to establish this cooperation, this cooperation process. And what I can speak mainly about today, of course, is what the two tools that I, I, I follow closer in DG Region, which are on the one side, the Interreg program, and on the other, the uh, EU uh, macro regional strategies. Uh, on Interreg, I will be very short, uh, because first of all, I know most of you are acquainted and also some uh, Interreg projects uh, are involved. And I, I saw in the organization of this event, but just to say a, a short reminder, so Interreg at the end is an EU funding program dedicated specifically to cooperation. Then it can, of course, cover different sectors, including, uh, of course, climate and energy planning, for example. So this is really the tool dedicated to, uh, to cooperation. But then let me please uh, spend maybe a bit more word on the EU macro regional strategy. Maybe uh, these are tools that maybe not everybody of you is, is, is acquainted with. These are cooperation framework. The main purpose, if we can summarize, is to better coordinate funds and action of any kind in a specific geographical area, which we call macro region. And for the moment, we have this uh, st strategic framework covering four macro region, the Baltic Sea macro region, the Danube macro region, the Adriatic Ionian macro region, and the Alpine macro region. And this uh, kind of tool, as you can imagine, I say coordinate all the existing funds in a certain uh, geographical area. So meaning, for example, of course, mainly your funds, but not only, and all the action in a certain geographical area, for example, of organization very active in this geographical area. So this is a rather complex process. And the key feature of this mechanism that try to allow the implementation of these processes are the following. One that I see it's very uh, much at the core of this session today, multi-level governance. The other cross-sectoral approach, uh, working across sector, which is also something we know very important, for example, for climate and energy planning. And then very important aspect, stakeholder involvement, active involvement of the stakeholder. For this, you need to build, of course, a, a, a solid, a very solid governance structure. Huh? And this, of course, uh, takes uh, quite some time uh, because, of course, it needs also to, to establish, you know, solid relations between those that are part of this governance structure. And they take, for example, what, what they take. I'm sorry, Giacomo, you're, uh, you are muted, so we could not hear you the last 10 seconds. I ah, sorry. Okay, it's, it's fine now? You, you yes, can please go on. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. So just I will say a few, few lots, but I wanted just to make the example of the Alpine strategy in particular, where, for example, there the region are involved on equal footing with the country, with the member state, the central government, uh, at both at the political level, which is, the, let's say, also the decision-making uh, uh, level of the strategy, in the, in the intermediate level between the decision-making and the implementation level, and, of course, very much in the implementation level. For example, the region are leading several of the areas of intervention of the strategy. And, for example, I make one example uh, that, of course, in particular, Patrick uh, Biard of the Environment Energy of Oveni Ronald know very well of uh, the action group of energy, for example, that is led by the Agency for Energy Environment of Oveni Ronald and South Tyrol, which is a, a, a regional authority in, in Italy. Then, for example, we have uh, this, this uh, uh, process, of course, helps a lot in order to uh, have really a strong coordination and cooperation between this level. Another concrete example, for example, now the Alpine strategy is the presidency of France and the presidency of France is constituted by the central government and the three region working together, the three Alpine French region working together. 
then let me spend a, a, a word on, on also the local authorities, for example, that uh, are, are, I know are very important actors in this, in this session today. Uh, for example, the local authorities, I see are more and more involved in the implementation level in participating in the different group dealing with the different sector in the strategy. So they also, I see more and more, have really an active role in, this, uh, in these processes. So you see, this is all a, all a, a structure that tries really to basically ensure a regular, because this is something very important, regular cooperation, regular coordination between these different level of governance. And just to say that, for example, this strategy is something maybe you can look also with interest also for the fact, because as, as stated, in the last report on the implementation of all these four macro-regional strategies I mentioned, they showed already how they are relevant, for the example, for the implementation of the European Green Deal. Uh, the, uh, they say the sustainable growth dimension in these strategies is very strong, including, of course, the climate and energy dimension, which is uh, very important for this. I, I think, Melissa, I would close with this because I know you have already a lot of uh, uh, very interesting intervention after me. I'm very happy to answer any question you may have. Uh, just uh, for to know if uh, you know, but I, I, at this I'm really deeply sorry. I will need to leave you already at 10 o'clock uh, because of another meeting that was already uh, planned before. But please, if you have any question, I'm very happy to, to reply. Thank you so much, Giacomo, and also for uh, keeping in mind, indeed, the, the dense agenda. But I think it was a great introduction. You, you really covered different things that uh, the other speakers will, will be able to develop later on. Uh, so, so it was very interesting for me. Indeed, uh, Giacomo has to leave us uh, in a few minutes. So if you have questions for him, now is the chance. As you can see, you can write directly in the chat or join us on Slido and ask your questions from there. So um, I don't see any questions now, but uh, it's fine. I can I can ask. I certainly have one or two questions for you, Giacomo. So I guess I can I can uh, have my own questions. That's the privilege of uh, moderation, I guess. So uh, yes, what I was very interested in, of course, uh, you developed uh, quite extensively on the macro regions. I was wondering, of course, it doesn't cover right now all of the territory of the European Union. You mentioned four macro regions. Do you know if more macro regions will be created in the coming months or years? Uh, I start with a sharp answer, but then I will develop it. The answer is no, <laughs> in the sense that uh, at the moment uh, there are no, let's say, elements that can allow me to say that for sure other uh, macro strategy will be developed. But what I can tell you, there are uh, initiatives uh, in different areas uh, to have uh, other, other macro region uh, from uh, in the Carpathian area, for example, Mediterranean area. But at the moment, I have to say the commission is not involved in, in this discussion, let's say at least in a formal way, so uh, for the moment, I cannot tell you if there will be other macro region, but I know there is interest to have additional, mm -hmm. additional macro region. Also, you see maybe completing existing because, for example, the Carpathian area, of course, is linked to the Danube. For example, a wider Mediterranean strategy would be, of course, very much linked to the Adriatic Union. But for the moment, I, I can, I, my answer is, is the, the, that one. Okay. <laughs> In any case, uh, as you said, it's not the only... Uh way to to cooperate the macro regions it's only one uh and and then well i will just like to follow up with uh, one other question i guess uh, our guests are not fully awake yet but i feel you probably uh, were very clear so there is not many questions but i think this one could still be interesting for a lot of people you mentioned that more and more municipalities are are actively contributing to to this process of uh, multi-level cooperation and even macro regions so if one municipality would like to get engaged in this process and doesn't know how, what would be your advice for them? How to start? I, I like concrete things, so we try to give a very <laughs> concrete advice. And the best thing 
is to look at the websites of the different macroregional statutes according to the location of the, uh, in this case, of the local authority, and to get in touch. They are clearly uh, listed out there. To the, they are called. It depends on the strategy because they have different names, but the, the concept is the thematic coordinator. So there are a couple of uh, institutions, either central uh, level or, as I said, regional level, or in some cases, even international organization that are coordinating certain sector within the strategy. So the best is to look at the website, to look the contact person for that is coordinating a specific sector of your interest and to get in touch with this person. I think this is the uh, most concrete uh, uh, way to do. Uh, I have to say in particular, just a, a remark, uh, uh, Melissa, I, the strategy, I speak in particular, the Alpine strategy, something I see really as a development because it's the one that I follow also closer. So for, for my task, I, I am involved in all the package, let's say, of my unit for the sustainable growth part, but then I follow a bit more the Alpine strategy, for example, I see there, uh, just to give you as a hint, uh, more and more active through the association. Because, you know, also that's something to be taken into account. I hope this may be useful advice. Of course, to contribute to the strategy require also its clear uh, resources. Uh, it's clear in terms of human uh, uh, and, uh, and time, for sure, uh, resources at least. So, for example, maybe the way to act through association, I think it's not a bad idea. I think it's a good idea in order to optimize effort. And then, of course, the association can then... Uh, uh, deal uh, coordinate with with of course with its uh, uh, member this is for example i see what's happening uh, in particular for, for italy in uh, in uh, in the alpine strategy at the moment thank you so much for this very concrete advice it's really great to see that yeah even in the european uh, commission you guys are still very much in touch with what is happening on the ground and it's great to hear patrick biard is also saying thank you very much giacomo for this uh, very inspiring keynote indeed so yeah thank you for being here we will now move on to the rest of the event um and uh yeah so thank you giacomo now i would like to welcome maria angela Lucieri from the Covenant of Mayors, and she has designed a, a short slide of, slide of questions for you before actually starting the presentation. So if you could please join us on, on Slido, I will do it as well. Uh, and the question from Maria Angela is the following. The European Union aims to reduce greenhouse gases emissions reduction by 55% by 2030. In your opinion, is this target achievable in your territory? The target is too high for a territory is one answer. Yes, it is in line with our regional local targets. Our territory is already committed to a higher target. We'll give you a few extra seconds to answer. So yeah, already 90. I can see, yeah, more people can join. If you have not used Slido before, there are two ways to do this, either going to the app if you have it or to the website and tap, typing the code you see there, GRF2050, get ready for 2050, or just uh, scanning the QR code if this works on your mobile. In any case, I advise you to do this on your mobile. This way you keep your um, computer for the, the presentations that we have planned, of course. And I haven't really properly introduced my colleagues, so I think I will do it now. So Maria Angela Luceri, uh, she's my federal colleague, but she's also managing the Covenant of Mayors help desk. Uh, and this is in her capacity of Covenant of Mayors officer that uh, she is joining today. So Maria Angela, welcome. What do you think of the results so far? Good morning, everyone. Uh, yes, in this, this was uh, what I was expecting. Uh, um, I ask these specific questions because, uh, as then I will introduce um, during my presentation, this is a very hot topic for the Covenant of Mayors right now. And uh, let me just start with the presentation, and then I will come back uh, on uh, the results that you give in this in this slide or later on. So, okay, then I will give you control of your own presentation. Thank you. Already start. Can you see my next presentation? Yeah. 
Okay, so the Covenant of Mayors is the world's leading initiative on climate and energy addressed to local authorities. Nowadays, it counts more than 10,000 municipalities all over the world called Covenant signatories. More than 9,700 municipalities come from the European Union member states. The initiative was launched in 2008 in the EU member state only and focused only on mitigation targets and actions where signatories committed to reduce their greenhouse gases emissions by the 20% by 2020 compared with the 1990 levels. The initiative then merged with the former Mayor's ADAPT initiative, including adaptation to climate change into, the, into its priorities. It began then global with the launch of the Global Covenant of Mayors and regional secretariats all over the world. On the 21st of April 2021, the Covenant of Mayors Europe started a new path addressed to support its community to reach carbon neutrality by 2050. So now signatories pledge to cut their greenhouse gases emissions, improve their resilience to climate change, but also to tackle energy poverty while ensuring a just transition for all. So what's new? First of all, the minimum requirements that are requested to signatories that now commit to reduce their greenhouse gases emissions by the, at least by the 80% by 2050. The, the Covenant of Mayors Europe Office and European Commission commit to ensure a just transition for all in all member states. And link it with the question that I asked you uh, before, as we perfectly know that there are such situations where the European targets may seem too high in a lot of countries and therefore in a lot of municipalities in the European Union, the Covenant of Mayor's Office is implementing a differentiated approach for a fairer and inclusive communities. Therefore, it is up to the Covenant signatories to define what are their mile, intermediate milestones on the road to climate neutrality. Therefore, they set mid and long-term targets that are consistent with the objectives and at least as ambitious as their national targets. We will foster the development of local climate paths with citizens and local stakeholders to achieve the, the city's objectives and embark the whole community. Sorry, I moved forward, okay. And embark the whole community. So, municipalities usually struggle to understand how their actions and ambitions are in line with EU policy, uh, with what defined by EU policy makers. The Covenant of Mayors tries to create a bridge between the different level of governance and translate the EU policies and targets into clear long-term roadmap that municipalities can follow. As you can see in the picture, uh, the initiative is embedded into the EU climate and energy policies and in, into the international sustainability agenda. In particular, it's linked with the green, European Green Deal, the European Climate Pact and uh, the Paris Agreement. All this framework is, is translated into the Covenant Europe priorities, which are reaching carbon climate neutrality, leaving no one behind, fostering circular economy, supporting the renovation wave and so on. The Covenant of Mayors uh, focuses on three pillars, adaptation, mitigation, and energy poverty. With these new commitments, uh, we also encourage uh, signatories to integrate socially just transition consideration, considerations as a core cross-cutting principle in their climate strategies and plans. In order to translate uh, their commitments into locally relevant solutions, signatories actually pledge to undertake a transformational change happening and including all sectors of their societies, from building, transport, but also including health, civil protection and emerging emergency planning, biodiversity, and so on. Okay. The Covenant of Mayors, uh, the city journey within the Covenant of Mayors is uh, similar for every municipalities. And the steps are all the same. Municipalities that join the initiative commit to set targets, assess baselines and develop an action plan within two years from their formal adhesion. They also commit to monitor the progress of the every two years following their action plan. With these new commitments, uh, uh, the process remain more or less the same. However, the focus of the initiative shift from targets and process towards the implementation of concrete actions on the ground. Signatories are also encouraged 
to engage with local stakeholders in both the de development and implementation of the action plan and to network with their peers and work together to overcome joint challenges. The methodological framework will evolve in the coming months, building upon the successful practices identified with experts and local practitioners on the ground. In particular, further, govern, further guidance will be given on energy poverty and just transition through specifically designed indicators and new supporting tools. Covenant signatories are not alone in their city journey. They are supported by a community uh, made of more than 500 organizations, including the networks running the Covenant of Mayors Europe office. The office offers technical support in the form of help desk reporting platform, capacity buildings, guidelines, tutorials, e-learning, and so on. The office is also constantly in contact with the European Commission and the national ministries of European Union member states in order to foster the role of local authorities in the climate agenda and in the use of public funds. The European Commission also um, has a huge role in the daily activities of the, of the initiative, in particular with the involvement of DGNR and DG Clima and the involvement of the Joint Research Center that supports the community through a ded dedicated technical help desk for mitigation and adaptations, technical publications and data anal analysis. The community is also formed by the so-called coordinators and supporters. Covenant coordinators are national, regional, and sub-regional public authorities, such as ministries, regions, provinces, and so on, that commit to provide technical and financial support onto the signatories in their territories. Covenant supporters are instead energy agencies, associations of local authorities, NGOs, and other non-profit organizations working on climate and energy. So what are the benefits of joining the community? First of all, all the members receive uh, recognitions from the European Commission and also large visibility at the EU and international uh, level, mainly thanks to the uh, promotion of their activities through the Covenant of Mayors Europe and Global Covenant of Mayors uh, communication channels. We offer speaker spots in EU and national events and so on. They also benefit from networking experiences with similar organizations and capacity building opportunities, both with peers and with experts. They have the opportunity to promote good practices and achievements through the whole community and consolidate their territorial development and strengthen multi-level governance. One important feature that is offered to territorial coordinators or so to regions and other sub-regional authorities is the provision of scientific and technical feedback on tools and methodologies uh, for CCAP development. In particular, these tools are then analyzed and recognized by the European Commission and the Joint Research Center with the possibility to have grouped analysis of CCAPs developed to, through these tools and these methodologies. This was my last presentation. As mentioned by Melissa, um, I work on the help desk and I leave here um, my contacts if you want to reach me and ask questions. And of course, I will remain for the whole sessions if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maria Angela, for this uh, this nice presentation. I think everyone knows the, the Covenant of Mayors, but sometimes uh, we don't really know what it entails. And it's good also to remind participants that may not be part of the Covenant of Mayors community, that it's still possible to join and it's still relevant to join, of course. So a nice reminder for all. And of course, during the three sessions, you will hear a lot about the Covenant of Mayors. It is one of the three main organizers and um, many of the projects that are involved in, in our uh, webinars have links and have joint initiatives with the government of mayors. So you will hear more about the government of mayors for sure. Um, so there are already questions uh, because we have again a dense agenda. We will take questions now uh, at the end of all presentations uh, before the breakout sessions. But uh, thank you for being active and asking questions already. Uh, now, if you don't mind, we will then move to our uh, third presentation already with Patrick Billard. Patrick Billard is uh, the head of the EU project division at ora the regional energy agency of Auvergne-Rhône-Alpes. He's also our deputy secretary general at Fedaren, and he's representing the C-Track 50 consortium today. 
uh, with this presentation. So Patrick, thank you for being here. I will give you control of the mouse and keyboard so you can uh, you can uh, start your presentation. Thank you very much, Melissa. Hello, everyone. Uh, I just tried to change the slide. OK, something. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, for some reason, I can't. Yes. Sometimes it takes a while, yeah. Okay, it takes a little bit, okay. So yes, hello everyone. So uh, why does uh, vertical cooperation matter and how to foster cooperation between public authorities across uh, administrative levels? Well, uh, we've all probably experienced situations where cooperation was kind of uh, missing sometimes leading to a lack of synergies, delays, or poor communication. So today I'd like to share with you some, uh, some insights from the uh, C-Track 50 project we've been working on over the last three years, especially focusing on effective uh, multi-level uh, governance. So a few words about the C-Track 50 project. Uh, C-Track 50 aims to achieve climate resili resilience and carbon neutrality by 2050. Uh, by uh, mobilizing public authorities in defining long-term uh, policy priorities and supporting uh, regional local authorities in designing, uh, implementing ambitious uh, integrated plan. And this is done by implementing effective multi-level governance, linking up national and sub-national uh, levels to achieve synergies and economies of scales. Uh, this being said, although uh, vertical collaboration is key and was key in uh, C-Track 50, we fully recognize the need for uh, multi-dimensional cooperation, including cooperation amongst public authorities across sectors and engaging uh, multiple stakeholders, as we will see later in the other presentation. So if we look at the climate and energy planning process today, uh, we can either comply with some regulatory frameworks, as you can see in red, uh, European directives in, uh, in some countries, you have some uh, uh, laws as well around energy planning. For instance, in France, uh, municipalities with more than 20,000 inhabitants will have to develop uh, an integrated plan for their uh, territory. And you also have the other way uh, to implement uh, voluntary schemes, as we have seen, for instance, through the Covenant of Mayors, or we have the C40 Cities, uh, European Energy Award, etc. Both regulatory and voluntary schemes can be complementary, but whatever choice you make, uh, you will need to work across all, uh, or at least several levels, for instance, when setting goals or in uh, financing. And that's where multi-level governance matters and will help you. But what do we mean by multi-level governance? And uh, within C-Track, we used uh, the definition proposed back in 2008 by the uh, Committee of the Regions. Uh, it refers to multi-level governance as an effective interaction between different political levels for an improved coordination and co coherence. And uh, it, eh? most importantly, it defines five principles of uh, good governance that we felt could be applied to many topics, uh, in particular, of course, in climate protection and sustainable energy. And this is where you need to watch out for the quiz coming later. <laughs> the first uh, principle is about transparency. So communicating and making information easily accessible and most importantly, understandable to all stakeholders and the general public. The second one is participation to ensure, of course, widespread participation of all stakeholders, each step of the way from the design to the implementation and monitoring phase. The third principle, accountability. So clarifying everyone's role and objectives. Then we have effectiveness, uh, clearly identifying the vision, objectives, expected results, 
and also evaluating the impact. And last but not least is coherence, uh, coherence in different dimensions. So ensure the that there is coherence between different actions, uh, particularly uh, with other governance processes. So within c -Track, we've tried to implement um, multi, some of these uh, uh, principles, and I'll show you later some, uh, some examples. Uh, now I just listed here um, the couple of uh, driving forces for implementing uh, effective multi-level governance, but there, there is a long list and that we may discuss later on during the, the breakout session. So one main challenge is, of course, the coherence of the plans across levels and sectors. For instance, as you know, developing coherent and consistent territorial climate and energy targets. It is quite OK to agree on the share of member states to the EU objectives on climate. But it is often more complicated when it comes to developing consistent regional and local uh, objectives. Another challenge, uh, if I may say so, is to take into account administrative level changes. As you know, we live in a very dynamic world and fast changing environment. And in some cases, levels are being created, like in France, we have uh, these intermunicipalities or metropolitan areas. And in other cases, they are just being removed or merged, like you know, provinces in Italy or regions in France. And that's where building effective cooperation can be a challenge, of course, but also a great opportunity to ensure um, continuity in your, in your action. A third driver is the increasing role of regions in scaling up the actions. We'll have a dedicated breakout session later on, so if you'd like to, to, to discuss this point. And last one we are all aware of and uh, encouraged strongly is, of course, the increasing role and engage, engagement of civil society in the various phases of designing, financing and implementing the actions. For instance, through uh, we hear a lot these days about local energy communities as a key, as a key uh, element. So to implement these um, Effective cooperation schemes, several tools can be used. And as Giacomo was mentioning earlier, it's important to customize or tailor uh, your process uh, according to your needs and objectives. Uh, here I just listed some of the tools, of course, cross organizational structures, networks, roundtables, etc. Uh, cooperation agreements, binding or non binding, but they are usually very effective tools for clarifying roles and plans. We have uh, regulatory frameworks, especially the ones uh, supporting integrated territorial planning. And last but not least, uh, stakeholder engagement tools uh, can be used and adapted to your uh, local context. And of course, there is a wide variety and we would advise you to work, for instance, with your uh, closely with your energy agency or European networks uh, such as Federen and other networks to design the best suited uh, series of engagement tools. Uh, engagement, engaging stakeholders through co-creation co uh, should not mean involve everyone all the time. <laughs> it requires tailoring to your needs and you may consider uh, cooperation processes also inspired by nature could be interesting as well. So what are the uh, benefits? So some of the benefits uh, that will be brought to you um, through a multi-level governance processes. Uh, so besides designing more uh, coherent plans, uh, we've seen some opportunities to develop clearer and more consistent visions. Uh, which is uh, always very uh, key in the process, but also establish more favorable financing, for instance, in embedding uh, EADF into uh, macro regional uh, policies and strategies, as Giacomo was mentioning earlier. Other benefits include pooling um, resources, skills, especially by regions, supporting, for instance, small municipalities 
and also some benefits in establishing uh, consistent and monitoring of the actions. Now I'd like to share with you briefly uh, some examples we've been working on in CTRAC, starting with Germany. So in Germany, uh, the main uh, uh, objective was to identify improvement potential to the National Climate Protection Initiative. This is an initiative that was started back in 2008 and uh, supporting many projects in, in, in Germany. And the idea here was to uh, uh, identify improvement potential working with uh, the uh, municipal and regional uh, actors. And they organized it through national roundtables, groups clustering, uh, involving local and regional stakeholders. They did some benchmarking of other MLG models and they analyzed other national uh, schemes on this topic. And as a result, they were able to define a set of recommendations, uh, for instance, concerning the role of national of the national level and uh, the importance to define some overarching framework to harmonize the efforts. And also one key uh, element was to ensure continuity in financial support and easier application scheme. Uh, so this is one example. Uh, the other one I'd like to mention here is in France. In France, the main goal uh, was to review uh, the climate and energy target setting process across all levels. And what they did is to organize multi-level roundtables involving the three levels, so national, regional, local, with different networks. And they also did so some uh, thorough what-if analysis uh, of the various uh, approaches. Uh, as, a key, as a result, they were able to develop a set of recommendations also that they are discussing with policymakers for developing uh, more consistent and harmonized um, energy and climate targets. So to conclude, I'd just like to share with you four success factors as prerequisites, let's say, for implementing effective multi-level governance that have emerged from our work. Shared vision, this is key. Uh, shared vision and political commitment are needed. Uh, decision makers need to work together and be willing to work together. If it's not the case, let's not uh, lose your time. Uh, but if it is the case, it will uh, accelerate the, uh, the process. The second one is based on partnership working. Here, uh, public authorities must be willing, uh, including the, uh, their staff, to work in close cooperation. This is not obvious <laughs> sometimes, and building trust will be crucial in this phase. Stakeholders involvement, as we have seen earlier, is important. Uh, it will require time and effort, and people will need to be committed to be successful. So you'll need to encourage them and incentivize them maybe to, 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 to follow this way. Finally, existing processes and or structures should be considered as a, key enablers for developing and adapting your multi-level governance. And you should not, most of the time, you should not start from scratch, but try to build on these processes, existing ones. And with that, I think, Melissa, that's pretty much all from my side. Uh, I would like to thank you very much for your attention. And I'm looking forward to your questions and comments. Thank you. Thank you very much, Patrick. Uh, we can see that uh, indeed Oradozo is very experienced with multi-level governance. Lots of good uh, advice there to, to replicate. Patrick has prepared a question for you, but he was kind enough to let you know that this would happen. So normally, if you listened, you should be able to, to answer it. So please, join slider now. Can you state one of the five principles of good governance as defined by the Committee of the Regions? Uh, and uh, the c track 50 project, as Patrick mentioned, used as well these uh, principles to work on multi-level governance. Please, uh, we are actually a bit already uh, late, so I will not keep the, the poll open too, too long. So uh, yeah, you have also the challenge of writing very fast, already 12. And this is already minutes. very encouraging. <laughs> yes, <laughs> people actually listened. Yeah. And Patrick, if I'm not wrong, you will also uh, 
come back to these principles in uh, in your session right later on so sure. yes yes so come back if you were allocated <laughs> i think you're all ready for implementing advanced cooperation so that's great thanks we have an advanced expert uh, crowd today very good thank you very much patrick thank you everyone joining the slido uh, happy to see you're still there uh, i hope you still have some energy because we still have uh, three presentations, very in interesting presentations now. Uh, we are going to go to the Pentahelix project, um, the third main organizer of this event series, uh, with Guri, uh, who is a climate coordinator and partner of the Pentahelix project, a uh, climate coordinator of the Vikin County. Sorry, uh, Guri. Uh, I will now give you control of the mouse and keyboard so you can uh, start with your presentation and please try to respect the seven minutes allocated because as I said, we are a bit late. Thank you very much, Melissa. And thank you all for having me here today. Um, Patrick has already given a very good introduction to the multi-level governance. Um, I'll try to attack it from a slightly different angle. Uh, this, as you can see, is my farm in Norway up in the mountains. Uh, and surviving on a Norwegian mountain farm is possible, just like tackling the climate changes and surviving becoming climate change is possible. Uh, but it requires work all year around the clock and you can't just survive on the local resources uh, at your farm. If you look extremely closely up here, there's a tiny house. This was the spring uh, a grazing area where the animals uh, went in the spring. And also the forest was important resources, is still important resources for heating, for building materials, and not the least for shipbuilding. So that uh, in the old days, they could travel to the cities to trade or uh, further down in Europe uh, and trade without money when they went in Viking. Further up in the mountains are the summer grazing areas, uh, also the hunting grounds for reindeer and deer. And today we also have uh, a hydropower plant. So locally on the farm, uh, it is us, it is the family. But up in the grazing, spring grazing areas, we share with all the neighbors. And the mountain grazing areas and hydropower plants, we share with several villages. Without uh, this cooperation, you can't survive. So, uh, since the action, since what is happening happens on a local level, this is where the Pentahelix project uh, is aiming most of our focus. How can uh, the actions be implemented? How can the CCAPs be developed in such a way that more actions are implemented on a local level? And how can we cooperate uh, with the regional, national, international level in such a way that uh, the local CCAPs are improved. I believe there are three areas where we have to work on reaching agreement on goals, uh, both within the municipalities with all the stakeholders. My colleague Anna will talk more about this uh, next week but also between municipalities and between the levels. We need to cooperate on increasing the drivers and also to reduce the barriers. The last one is um, almost the most important one. <clears throat> on the goals, of course, they have to be smart. Uh, they have to be specific, measurable, ambitious, realistic, and timed. And these are some of the municipalities who have cooperated on developing CCAPs together in, uh, in the Viken Östfold area. And as you can see, the numbers are slightly different. 
but the numbers are all based on common calculations. So these numbers are all based on uh, how much can we in total reduce if all transport emissions go to zero, all emissions from heating goes to zero, so no fossil emissions, and we attack all other emissions too. So overall for the region, we can get to 80%, we believe. But some of our municipalities, like Sashpur has a very large industry, it's not possible for them to reach more than 50%. And Roda has a very large agricultural sector. So it's, it's not feasible to go uh, higher than this. And this of course means that other municipalities have to reduce more. But in total, we, will, we are going in the same direction. Uh, we agree upon that and we agree upon how we measure this. On the driver side, uh, we have been working uh, on uh, climate communication uh, with a climate communication guideline. Uh, we share uh, and let uh, all the municipalities share all the good things and good initiatives they are doing so that it's possible to benchmark with the neighbors. And of course, it's the financial side uh, where the grants are as the grants are. There's not much we can do from a local or regional side on that, but we can reduce the cost side. We can share costs uh, just like we do on our farm. We share the costs with the neighbors. We own machinery together. The municipalities are sharing uh, starting to share also some testing of fossil free machinery to reduce the cost for each individual municipality. So for my slider question, I was wondering if you could uh, tell me what are some of the main non-financial barriers for implementing climate actions in your municipality? Um, why, why isn't more happening? What are the barriers you are seeing? So if you could please uh, give me some examples. Sorry, Gouri, I think, can we close it now? Because you have about yes. two minutes left to close. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so it's, it's I see a lot of uh, lack of capacity, lack of uh, knowledge, lack of people to do the work. And this is also the same we are seeing. Let's see. If it's possible to move on. Yep. So it's, it's the same thing we are seeing. Uh, lack of capacity, lack of knowledge, lack of staff, lack of um, possibility to do the work. And that is why we are focusing what is it that we can do once together rather than many times separately. And what can we do similarly separately rather than inventing the wheel many times. So we have uh, cooperating on statistics, on texts, on figures, on illustrations, and these are all shared on the Pentahelix webpage uh, for everyone to use. And you can also use the forum there to uh, exchange ideas and get uh, more materials to use in your municipality. Of course, you have to adapt it to your local environment, but 
this is uh, hopefully a help uh, with the capacity problem. Uh, we have also seen that task force meetings, meetings with the stakeholders, cooperation with the stakeholders, a pentahelix methodology we have developed, uh, can be done very efficiently on a regional level with the regional actors. Some of the larger industries uh, have challenges meeting each individual municipality, so we do it together. We work on capacity building, etc. And for us, we can uh, county, this is also helped by being a covenant of mayors coordinator. And some things must be done on the local level, but we uh, do it in a similar way so that uh, we don't have to do all the thought processes individually. So, uh, these are some links that you can go to to see how we have developed climate statistics for all the municipalities to use in their CCAPs and energy uh, statistics for the CCAPs. So the links are below with it. So more in the discussions afterwards. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Guri, and for sticking to time. Uh, that's very appreciated. As Guri said, uh, about a fourth of you, in any case, will hear more about uh, this uh, interesting approach to multilateral governance in the second part of the event. Uh, so now I would like to welcome uh, Kera Barkiasi, uh, who will talk about the Joint CCAP project, which is an indirect project, and how they approach collaboration uh, within this uh, this project. So I will now give you control of the mouse and keyboard, Chiara. Here you go. Yeah, good morning, everyone. And thank you very much, Melissa, for uh, the organization of this very interesting uh, meeting. Uh, um, I'm not, uh, 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 maybe it takes a few minutes to go. Uh, Let's wait a bit for moving the presentation because I cannot see the buttons yet. Okay, here we are. So um, just uh, um, quickly, we are going to present, uh, as uh, Melissa mentioned, our experience uh, within the Joint Secup uh, project. Um, why it's not working? Yeah. Uh, just a very quick overview on uh, Abruzzo region. Abruzzo is located, as you can see here, in uh, the very center of Italy, stretching from the Apennines to the Adriatic uh, Sea. Uh, and it is known as uh, the green region of Europe, as uh, one third of its territory is set aside as national park and protected uh, areas. Um, Abruzzo region is uh, um, deeply uh, committed uh, um, to reaching the European climate and energy uh, targets. I don't know why it's not moving. Uh, I will I will do it for you otherwise. I will try to give you again. Thank you very much. I will I'm there to help. Yeah please. That's great. Thank you very much. So um, as I mentioned before, Abruzzo region is deeply committed to uh, reaching uh, the European energy and climate goals. Um, and uh, for this, uh, it has developed a regional strategy on adaptation to climate change and is currently working at the um, regional strategy on sustainable development. Uh, fostering the integration of both strategies in line, of course, with the European Green Deal, the climate law and the national strategies. Uh, next slide, please. Um, which is the governance we have, we have uh, implemented for this? Uh, first of all, we are fostering the intersectoriality, uh, that is the coordination of all regional plans and programs, and this is mainly done through the institution of a permanent regional task force for adaptation to climate change and sustainable development. Um, this is done through the implementation of the bottom-up strategy, which, first of all, for a 
with the involvement in the covenant of mayors uh, for both the region and all its municipalities, as I will show you later, um, through the direct involvement of all universities, uh, stakeholders and citizens in the um, definition of the strategies and data gathering. So through the active involvement uh, of uh, citizens and stakeholders uh, and through networking and strategy sharing with other European and world, world regions, both within uh, uh, associations such as, for example, Federal and the Covenant of Mayors and uh, European projects. Uh, next slide, please. Um, Abruzzo region is a territorial coordinator of the Covenant of Mayors and all its uh, 305 uh, municipalities and four provinces joined the Covenant of Mayors uh, between uh, 2010 and 2011. Um, now the region is coordinating with its municipality to update their setups into CCAPs um, and uh, indeed it has uh, let's Say intercepted uh, the Inter-Italy Croatia program, and uh, within uh, this program, and uh, especially within the Joint CCAP project, is working uh, with uh, two target areas um, at the realization of uh, Joint CCAPs by the end of June, which is the end date of the project. The next slide, please. Uh, so, uh, the Gen C Cup project is uh, funded by the Interreg Italy Croatia program and it aims to build a common methodology for the definition of joint C Cups, um, reflecting the necessity to operate on a wider district level and better define strategies and actions for climate change adaptation. Uh, main outputs of the project are uh, nine joint C Cups, which corresponds to nine target uh, areas and the joint CCAP support system platform. The project is coordinated by the University of Camerino and uh, Abruzzo region, as I mentioned before, is a partner of this project. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so within the project, uh, uh, or it's better to say that for implementing the project, Abruzzo region has identified two target areas. Uh, one area, uh, which is target area one, as you can see here, is uh, uh, an hilly uh, area made up by four municipalities, which are quite small. Uh, meanwhile, the second target area is uh, a coastal area uh, made up by five municipality, it, municipalities. It is also important to highlight that the, the region is also coordinating with the municipality of Pescara, which is indeed a direct part, partner within the project and is working with other five municipalities for the implementation of a joint CCAP. Next slide, please. Thank you. So it's very hard to, to talk now about uh, what we did within the project because we have done a huge work. Um, but I try to give you the idea of what the region has done within it, of course, with all uh, the partners. So I can say that the project is uh, uh, made up by two main phases. The first phase is the first phase of uh, as far as in um, the building of a common methodology for uh, joint actions. Uh, within the first phase, we have made uh, the context analysis, climate analysis, so we have identified the case studies, plans, uh, uh, funding tools, uh, both at uh, local and uh, several local level. We have developed the vulnerability and risk methodology and assessment. Um, and uh, just to give you an idea, we Within this uh, phase, sub-phase, let's say, uh, we have, for example, developed uh, impact chains uh, with the help uh, of stakeholders, of course. Uh, we have identified uh, indicators. Uh, um, we have uh, uh, weighting uh, uh, indicators. Uh, we have made the risk assessment. So uh, a really huge work has been done. And of course, the region has done this in coordination with the municipal 
municipalities of the target area and all partners of the project. And then we have uh, realized the Giant Seacup web platform, whose link is available here in the right uh, in, in the slide. You can see here in the right corner, um, which will be a very important tool for identifying uh, joint actions. Uh, next slide, please. The second main phase of the project um, is related to the definition of scenarios, that is uh, the scenario zero and the optimal scenario. And we made it uh, through also through the implementation of uh, a focus group with the regional stakeholders. We who are very crucial for uh, uh, making a very good plan. Um, we have made the preliminary scoping report and the SEA guidelines, and uh, we are now using the web platform to build joint adaptation actions and create joint projects beyond the project deadline. Um, a key figure um, in the project is the joint coordinator for each target area who coordinates uh, uh, all uh, municipalities involved and stakeholders. Uh, here, I just tried to include some uh, um, some uh, graphs and tables uh, to, to just to give you an idea of what we have done uh, at the end of the project. Uh, um, we uh, selected the five joint actions for all nine target areas. It has been a very long and complex process, so I cannot uh, explain in details how we did it. And uh, I would like to point out that 21 actions, uh, joint actions, have been identified by Abruzzo region. And I would like also to say that we have done this also uh, with the support of the expert of Agena, which is the energy agency of the province of Teramo. Next slide, please. Um, so, um, the Joint Seeker project has been uh, and is really, really strategic and important for the region because we are now able, as intermediate body, to transfer the experience we gained within the project to all our municipalities. And this is, uh, I think, uh, uh, really uh, an added value for the whole regional territory. Um, so our aim is to support uh, all our municipalities to update their setup into CCAP according to a district logic, I'm sorry. How can we do that? Of course, uh, um, being a kind of uh, a technical assistance to all our municipalities uh, which want to uh, work at their CCAPs. Uh, we are supporting them, for example, um, in the identification of the homogeneous uh, climatic are areas. Um, we are uh, providing them all the tools we have developed within the joint CCAP project from the guidelines to the methodology developed. We are supporting Supporting them in the um, identification and the finding of uh, data gathering because uh, uh, it is really important to properly work at the local indicators. And without them and without good data, it is really not possible to have uh, an effective, a very important uh, uh, joint action plan. We are also trying to um, address uh, them towards uh, the funding and integrating funding. And that's what we have done, for example, thanks to the Joint CCAP project. We are updating the energy data with the support of uh, our universities for all SEAPs uh, uh, submitted by municipalities. And um, we are connecting uh, uh, all municipalities with the Covenant of Mayors. So next slide, please. So to conclude, um, we do really think as, and this is uh, this has been already said because uh, we, we, I mean, it is clear that it is very important to foster the sharing and cooperation between all levels, European, national, and regional. And uh, let me say that in this phase, the regions, paying uh, intermediate bodies, have a key role. Um, it is really needed to integrate local and regional planning uh, uh, and initiatives to tackle climate change and turn risks into opportunities. We are trying to do that, for example, through the establishment of the regional task forces I mentioned before. 
before. Um, we do believe that uh, the district logic and thus the joint CCAP strategies uh, engages local authority in the building of a common and therefore more successful vision, especially because as we know, climate change goes behind uh, uh, the administrative boundaries. So cooperation is really important. And as we have seen before, many municipalities face the problems of lack of uh, funding, uh, human uh, resources, uh, lack of expertise and whatever. So it is really important to join the effort to work towards climate change. The role of stakeholder uh, is really uh, the key for making a powerful uh, plan. And uh, PASC is really, really uh, a powerful tool because it translates uh, the political commitment into concrete measures with positive impact in the territories. And last but not least, I would like to highlight that the Covenant of Mayors has really a key role in the achievement of the Europe um, targets uh, because it uh, directly engages municipalities and regions and it really can and must be a protagonist in the Green Deal and European law on climate. So uh, as you have seen, we have uh, done a lot of work, a huge work, which is of course at the disposal of municipalities. Uh, we are going to have the final conference of the Joint SICA project on uh, 16 and 17 of June. And uh, in that occasion, also with the support of Federen, we will go deeply into the technical issues. So if you want to join us, of course, we will be more than happy we will circulate the save the date and um, yes yeah, so, um, circulate the program now there is a question thank you very much <laughs> so yes yeah, thank um, you very I much for the presentation Cara please go ahead Thank you. I tried to go very to go quickly because of time, and um, of course, I would like to ask you: How do you think that uh, regions can support municipalities in the realization of local plans? Uh, of course, financial support, that's always the key. Yeah, that's what I expected, of course. It is, it is true. I mean, it is challenging also for the region themselves, of course. Financial support is the key to be, I mean, it is very important. So, yeah, I was expecting this answer, of course. Okay, and coordination indeed. Thank you very much, Chiara. Uh, one Thanks about how, uh, no, force, a force of the participants will join your group later on and you will be able to discuss further the experience of joint CCAP and also how to, uh, how to develop uh, joint CCAPs uh, with uh, several municipalities. So now let's move on to the final presentation. Uh, I hope you still have strength to listen to our uh, very interesting speaker. I'm glad to welcome Silvia De Negris from the Piemonte region. So still in Italy, but uh, maybe different approach. Let's see. Uh, Silvio, I will give you control of your slides. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Yes. And uh, you have seven minutes. Okay, thank you very much. So, okay, I, I will present um, the case of the Piemonte region in supporting municipalities. Uh, and uh, if you don't know, uh, uh, Piemonte is one of the largest uh, regions in Italy. It is in, located in northwest part of Italy. So we are close to the border of France and Switzerland. And in the, in the region, we have more than 300 signatories, which is uh, roughly 27% of the total municipalities we have, since we have more than 1,000 municipalities here. Most of them are really very small. And uh, the adhesion of the Covenant of Major to the Covenant of Major is not evenly distributed uh, as it is concentrated in several areas of, of the region. This is because uh, here the territorial coordination of uh, 
of uh, the covenant of measure and the, the, the presence of uh, uh, supporters of the covenant of measure was more effective um, in, in the past. And um, when we try to promote uh, uh, activities in support of local authorities, we of, of course take into account what a local authority can do and uh, really briefly they can act as regulatory body, as, act as a consumer since they manage quite a lot of um, buildings and services for the for the citizens uh, but they can also act as leaders creating uh, partnerships and projects uh, uh, to develop new ideas and new activities so uh, we are trying to figure out some strategies supporting uh, uh, municipalities in this in those fields but on the top of uh, of uh, everything we try to support them uh, uh, in the planning pro uh, process uh, and uh, we are acting as uh, a, a regional energy observatory collecting uh, energy data uh, for supporting uh, municipalities in, 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 in their planning activities uh, and uh, uh, related to energy but also uh, in the other fields. So uh, this is key and uh, this is uh, the, the topic uh, that uh, I would like to discuss with some of you in the breakout room uh, later on. Um, but uh, uh, just to provide some, uh, some other um, uh, examples, uh, of course, we support municipalities in uh, providing financial support. Uh, with the, we manage uh, some grants that we uh, deliver mainly to municipalities for the refurbishment of public buildings and street lighting systems. Uh, and what we do for the covenant of measure is that we provide additional rewards for the for the uh, municipalities who uh, joined the, the the covenant, uh, given uh, the fact that maybe if they have. Uh, a, a, a an overall strategy at back it's uh, they, they they this is something that we should take into account and i have to say that uh, given the fact that 27 percent is the municipalities uh, uh, signing the, the covenant of measure these uh, municipalities are uh, um, are uh, more than average good in uh, attracting uh, uh, grants uh, at regional level. So uh, to be part of the network is also a, a real, a tangible uh, um, uh, plus for them, for them because they are able to attract more, more uh, financial resources. Uh, um, but we also try to develop uh, uh, projects uh, funded at EU levels, um, and those projects are mainly addressed to municipalities. Uh, so. We act as, a re, in this case, as coordinator, territory coordinator, and we developed several initiatives uh, for the for the municipalities. For example, uh, for example, uh, we we managed some project uh, um, dealing with uh, the de um, development assistance, technical development assistance, uh, in order to finance uh, investment using uh, innovative financing schemes such as uh, energy performance contract. Uh, and nowadays, we are deeply committed in the energy community topics. Uh, the the uh, topic that we want to promote in our uh, area with several initiatives. Of course, the Covenant of Major is also a uh, network, is uh, also, also the key target of our communication uh, and dissemination activities and strategies. Uh, and, and for example, we were among the first to organize uh, um, uh, events uh, promoting the European City Facility, and also we have been. Uh, lucky enough and good enough, I would say, to, to have some successful application uh, also over there. And now in the, in the Prospect 2030 project, we are collecting some best practices from, uh, from uh, municipalities in order to create uh, um, a communication, let's say, uh, tool to, uh, to ease the replication of, of this among other municipalities. Uh, let's come to the end of my presentation, so I, 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 I will use uh, um, even less than, than I uh, minutes that I was planned to, um, future programs. Uh, I think what, uh, what we should uh, do and what uh, we will do 
uh, in the next six months is, uh, is really to uh, reinforce the, uh, the network. Uh, as we uh, have heard now, we have a new goals, uh, new uh, targets to be uh, a new challenge in front of us. And I think uh, we will uh, plan a, a, a new strategy for, for reinforcing the network in the Covenant of Major in the, in the, next, uh, in the next month. Uh, and, uh, and we will boost uh, uh, even the, the, the regional uh, energy observatory and, uh, and uh, the involvement of the municipalities in, in projects. So I, I came to the end of, uh, of my presentation and I think there is also one, one question for you. Uh, is there? Okay, so it, the, the question is uh, mainly related to the breakout room that I, I will, um, managed uh, with uh, with Catherine Pema. Uh, is there a climate and energy observatory in your region? This is the the question, and and um, I mean, uh, it, it, for me, it is key if a region collect uh, energy data or, or climate data and provide them to municipality. This is uh, easing the, the planning process, uh, and of course, it's uh, it make consistency among and, and comparability at, uh, among plans at regional at, at local level. That's it. Thank you very much, Silvio, and sorry for uh, rushing you in your presentation, but uh, yeah, I think it was already a comprehensive overview of everything that the Piemonte region does for its municipalities. You guys will hear more about regional observatory in the breakout session if you were allocated to this group. You also have the opportunity to hear more about the Prospect 2030 project in the second session. You can still register for it. And Silvio also mentioned refurbishment of buildings. If you want to hear about EPC and how to finance some of these renovations, you can register to session three. Silvio was nice enough to, to join us for the full program. Uh, so, Silvio, apparently a lot of our participants don't have a climate and energy observatory, so you know where to start, I guess, for the second part. Uh, thank you again. I invite Thanks, now all the, part, all the speakers and the facilitators to open the webcam to see uh, if there is uh, some questions. I had a look at the chat and I think uh, most of the questions were directed to my colleague, Mariangela, about the Covenant of Mayors and she already answered them. There were some questions to the European Commission. Unfortunately, our colleagues had to leave quite early because, uh, you know, it's there's a lot of meetings these days. Uh, but maybe one of our speakers can answer Nicolas' question. Uh, I guess you might know, uh, will the Commission set up additional financing for municipalities implementation of additional measures to cover the gap between old and new 2030 goals? Does anyone would like to answer this one? or you don't know, I actually don't know of any specific funds that uh, are allocated specifically for this gap. Well, maybe maybe I, I can call Maria Angela, which is still here, but, uh, because I think one of the facilities, as I mentioned very briefly, the European City Facility is, is a tool that can be used by cities to, to develop something new, innovative, and some uh, can, can give a push to, to this, but maybe I'm not the right person to speak about that. <laughs> Mariangela, would you like to say a word about UCF? I apologize. Could you please repeat? Because I'm trying to find the questions on the chat, but uh, I cannot. It's find here. It. It's on the screen. Can oh, I apologize. See? Yes, there, there is both options. It's Nicolas' question. So, and Silvio was uh, was saying that indeed UCF could be used in that purpose. Yes, indeed. Um, yeah. However, uh, for UCF, you already have to set at least targets. Uh, so you have to have at least uh, an action plan, um, even for 2020, but uh, it can definitely be used to further implement and further find uh, possible actions to implement in the next future. Okay, thank you very much. Well. I think I haven't seen any questions focusing on multi-level governance. I think it's also because it's a complicated topic that needs more interaction. And I think you will be able to 
to uh, go deeper in this in the second part. So now, uh, in order to uh, give a break to your uh, brains uh, that have been uh, very actively uh, solicited in this first part, we will take a short break. Uh, we are 10 minutes late, so I will ask, well, the speakers and facilitators, do you think it's better to still take 10 minutes of break and finish a bit later the session at 10, 12, 10? Or we take five minutes of break, we come back in five minutes in order to to allow for everyone to take their lunch break at noon, more or less. What do you think? Same for you. Compromise situation. We come back in uh, you should, seven you minutes. You should open a poll. Uh, <laughs> yes, I haven't planned this. I, I was too optimistic about timing. Then let's take seven minutes break, everyone. Uh, my colleague Joao here uh, has already allocated you to your rooms. I suggest we start the room process. This way uh, you go take a coffee and when you come back in seven minutes, you will already be in your groups ready to hear uh, the interesting uh, presentations and exercises that the facilitators have planned for you. So seven minutes, that is uh, 11.03, let's say, that we come back. Thank you, everyone. I will stop the recording now uh, because the second part is not recorded in order to encourage everyone to speak freely. And I will start again recording when we come back to plenary for a very short uh, wrap up. Welcome back. Thank you. We did it. <laughs> Indeed. I'm sorry, I think some of you were not done yet, but normally there was 60 minutes left in one minute. Every, yeah. Yeah, there was the message popping up. Uh, and since you were over the and very time, efficient, yeah. you came back early. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks to Guri and Anna for being so efficient to the rest of the participants. Let's see. We're still missing. Yeah. Our speakers are still joining. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you had enough time. Well, I know you never, never really have enough time usually, but uh... yeah. Sorry, our our, uh, our participant Yanis was uh, explaining something, and he got cut in the middle. <laughs> sorry, Yanis. <laughs> Well, maybe you can share with the rest of the group. <laughs> yes, thank you. No, no, well, the question was that uh, if we think about climate neutrality, so we have to think everything, not only energy. And this, I think, is the main issue. But also, organizers assess that there's the gap in methodology, how to calculate emissions from, from every sector, not only energy. It includes, like... Uh, absorbed emissions, agriculture, waste management, and everything. And this is a huge challenge. And then we discussed uh, why we are gathering all the data, uh, which is uh, important because of the energy management system, SECAPS, and, and in general, how to inform people why they need to renovate their buildings. <laughs> That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Yanis. I think uh, this was a good conclusion. No, I'm joking. Let's still hear from the facilitators what happened. Uh, so yeah, let's start with uh, Patrick and Nina's group. Can you summarize uh, in three minutes what happened? We can see the screen. Yeah, so the topic uh, was about uh, regions supporting local energy and climate action. And basically we have we had a very interactive session discussing good practices in the various fields. And uh, we started with by answering this question, in what areas does your region provide effective support to local energy and climate action? So I let Nina comment the, the results. Uh, yes, thank you, Patrick. Um, so we have, uh, we received some good practices from um, planning and financing investment. 
uh, we had uh, testimonies from uh, Spain and Greece as well on the awareness raising, uh, some good practices involving uh, local citizens and awareness campaigns uh, targeting local authorities through uh, virtual uh, platforms because of the COVID situation. And also we have good insights from Greece regarding uh, social innovation and uh, mainly energy communities that are in, um, involved and uh, legislated in the regular national framework. So this is a, a good uh, facilitation to have more energy communities uh, in, the, in the regions. Patrick, do you wanna add some, uh, some insights? Thank you, Nina. I think okay. uh, it was a very rich discussion, many good uh, examples and uh, a bit short of time, but... <laughs> as usual. Very, as usual, yes. Thank Perfect. you all. Yeah. Thank you, it, everyone. It seems very interesting. I'm sad I didn't uh, get to attend it, but uh, yeah, I'm glad discussion went well in, in that room. We can see how uh, broad and in, all encompassing the topic is in your in your explanations. Uh, now let's go to room two. Pentahelix, uh, Guri and Anna, can you summarize briefly what, uh, what are the main conclusions, discussion points? Yes, thank you. Uh, we have touched uh, upon several issues, uh, but the main summary is that uh, there needs to be even more work done on uh, drivers, on the raising the political interest in the municipalities. Some places you see uh, very eager and interested uh, politicians and the municipalities. Other places uh, there's still a way to go. Uh, and some places um, they are interested uh, on a, a surface level, but it doesn't go very deep. So there's still work to be done on that side. Uh, for the work part of it, uh, lack of capacity and knowledge, but especially capacity in the administration is seen as a very important barrier. Um, and there you have both in developing seed caps and implementing, but also with the integration uh, to other plans, uh, spatial planning was especially touched upon. Uh, where it's challenging to get a good integration of uh, climate, uh, especially in the countries where it's not mandatory, but voluntary. Uh, on the other hand, we see in concrete actions, several uh, areas where um, it is really happening now uh, with, um, for instance, heat, uh, where it has to be multi-level by necessity so a multi-level cooperation can be done. Uh, we got uh, good examples from different countries on both carrots and rips uh, in uh, getting um, municipalities to increase their work. Uh, for example, regions helping municipalities uh, in the practical work to develop and implement action and also in increasing capacity. Uh, and also uh, on how uh, funding from regions can be dependent on municipalities developing sea caps. So uh, different ways to move the issue along. So there are positive uh, signals, but we have a long way to go and we need to continue uh, developing this uh, cooperation at <laughs> levels. Perfect, thank you very much, Gouri. That was a good summary as well. I'm glad that uh, there are best practices and I hope that the discussion will really spur further uh, improvements and projects and cooperation in all the regions participating today. Now let's move uh, to uh, Rosalba and Chiara, joint CCAP. What happened in your room? Any uh, idea on how to increase uh, the number of trained C caps, improve the quality? I see. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I think that uh, I cannot see. Okay, Timothy, I see. Okay. okay. Hello. 
I'm Timothy, a colleague of uh, Rosalba. Uh, I will share my screen right away. So uh, just a moment. Can you see it? I think so. Yes. Okay, so uh, I would like to thank the participants of our uh, very effective and very interactive uh, session. Uh, let's say that we have some open questions, but we also have some uh, kind of answers to the questions uh, that emerged during the session. One question was, uh, what is the secret of effective cooperation between the municipalities for the construction of joint setups? And what could the risks be? So uh, we, we, we know that uh, focus groups uh, uh, can have a central role, but also agency that support cooperation between municipalities and stakeholders uh, could help, could help to create consensus. Uh, also an active role of policymakers could be a really uh, central point. Uh, for example, the use of uh, already existing and available platforms between uh, the municipalities could be uh, something uh, we could work on. Uh, what tools could be used to improve this cooperation between municipalities? Uh, for example, searching fundings is a hard task, especially for small municipalities. Uh, so supporting programs for municipalities could be one answer. Uh, do you think that an external or internal uh, figure subject uh, could be a useful presence capable of guiding uh, the work to build effective uh, opportunities of collaboration? Uh, yes, the answer is generally yes. And uh, this is especially uh, real in, in case of small municipalities, uh, since the setups are becoming uh, more and more complex. It is uh, necessary to have someone who, who is capable of guiding the whole uh, uh, process. Uh, but uh, even in these cases, uh, there are some uh, issues and some challenges related to political uh, issues. Uh, the regions could have a, a role, an important role uh, in, in, this, uh, uh, in this case of the political issues. Uh, and uh, policymakers should have a, a, a supporting role. Could county and regional plans have a role in the development of SECAP? Uh, yes, because uh, uh, they could be useful, uh, but also they could be useful, for example, in collecting and sharing data. We know that uh, the collection of data is one uh, important issue. Uh, do you think that municipalities can quickly implement uh, SECAPs in case they have uh, already uh, other kinds of plans that are ongoing? Uh, and small municipalities, uh, if they work together, they can improve uh, um, their setup, uh, their, their policy on climate change and adaptation, uh, especially uh, with the help of uh, um, policymakers. Uh, and um, let's say that municipalities should have anyway an active uh, uh, role in this process. Um, in some uh, case, uh, there are municipalities that um, already have uh, plans uh, on uh, uh, this uh, issue. So um, it is important to foster the co coordination uh, between uh, small, uh, small municipalities and try to integrate in further plans. Let's say that the joint setup, uh, our experience can be considered as the beginning of a, a, a new kind of process of synthesis. It could be an opportunity to build even further projects on this topic. Thank you. Thank you so much, Timothy, for this uh, clear and comprehensive summary. Well, you mentioned data, then uh, this is the opportunity for me to move to group four, Silvio and Catherine. Uh, I believe this was the main topic of your room. So can you Tell us a bit more about discussion on data in your group. So, so we uh, discussed uh, about uh, how to collect data and uh, we highlighted three different sectors. The first of all, the transport sector. 
the, um, where um, it's not so easy and and snow um, for, for some some of us not so easy to find uh, the, the the good data or the data provided uh, in this sector and uh, so we mentioned some uh, some uh, a good practice or I could say some uh, ex ex uh, examples or experiences uh, through uh, disaggregation uh, to um, disaggregation of data to local level or, or using open data, uh, for example, uh, using uh, the sustainability Google uh, tool. Um, and we also talked about uh, the residential sector uh, where uh, data is um, more available, I could say and uh, using uh, centralized eating, biomass conception, and uh, providing total consumption per sector, not uh, building per building. Um, we we'll need also to, to improve this uh, sector by developing energy management systems. And uh, we also discuss about agriculture sector, which is a, a, a big issue for for some regions and um, uh, especially for rural areas, where agriculture sector is uh, is uh, an important sector not only for the CO two emission but also for, um, of course. Uh, providing food, but also for uh, carbon storage. And, and so it's, it's a very, uh, you, you have to, to have a, um, an, another approach for this sector, which is different from, uh, from, from only energy and CO2 uh, emissions data. And you have to, 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 to to make with this sector for, especially when you talk about uh, uh, carbon, low carbon strategy. So, um, and we, we, we make the, the yeah, I like the point that we, we have to improve this uh, data about this sector. And um, maybe Silvio, I don't know, you can, you can talk about the, um, uh, the EU level and this uh, international cooperation on, on data. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, we, we also, oh, by the way, mentioned this, uh, that the need of transnational cooperation is, uh, is a way to, to improve the overall uh, capacity of, uh, of, uh, of regions uh, in, uh, in providing data. And um, okay, the, the key uh, outcome of this uh, very short discussion about this, uh, this point was that uh, uh, what is uh, most valuable and the most important added value to, to have this uh, transnational cooperation is about uh, uh, sharing experiences uh, and, uh, and uh, learn from each other rather than uh, develop common methodology uh, that can be used uh, um, in, in all Europe. Uh, I mean, so uh, nowadays there are some projects running on this uh, subject and there is this Energy Watch uh, network that is also providing uh, peer to peer learning uh, activities uh, and also about some of the issues raised uh, um, by Catherine, for example, in transport sector, it was mentioned. Uh, so, okay, this was the, the outcome of, uh, of this point uh, in the discussion. And maybe a, a final remark. I can uh, I can support uh, what Yanis uh, uh, said before that uh, uh, there is the need of uh, even more integration uh, uh, because we don't have to stick only in, in, in energy uh, field. So since we are speaking about multi-level governance, we, we know that uh, it's not only vertical, but uh, at the end uh, there is the big issue of uh, of uh, horizontal uh, cooperation among. Uh, uh, sectors department in the, in the public authority and also this is a very big challenge in front of us to 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 integrate the different level of planning and, uh, and not uh, focus only on one on single point very good thank you silvio and i think uh, my colleague elodie raised it during the the breakout session but it could be interesting for others as well uh, you mentioned energy watch 
uh, Elodie, I know you said the capacity building program is about to start and there are still some uh, possibilities to join, correct? Yes, uh, we uh, still have one place left for, sorry for my voice, <laughs> data collection, uh, one on data monitoring and one on the data display, so three seats available. Uh, if uh, someone wants to join, I leave my uh, contact details in the chat. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much, uh, everyone. I will not keep you any longer because, uh, well, it has been uh, a long morning, interesting, but long and uh, and yeah, I think you all need a break now. But uh, yeah, I think uh, looking at everything that was said only in this wrap-up session, this is exactly what we aim to do, to, uh, to provide some tools, ideas, brainstorming on how to support municipalities, how to advance cooperation between uh, different levels, different organizations. And uh, I believe uh, we will go further in uh, session two and three, because uh, as you know, it's not enough to discuss cooperation. Although there is still obviously a lot of work left to do on that level as well. We also need to discuss how to actually have uh, good planning, energy and climate planning, how to implement it as well and how to finance it. So please, uh, I hope you have registered. If not, you can still do so in the coming days. Uh, and uh, I hope to see you for session two and three. Thank you again to all the speakers. Sorry for the the very uh, complex uh, timing that I imposed. I hope uh, it was okay for you and that you all uh, enjoyed this morning. See Melissa, you, see you Melissa, 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 Melissa. Yes. Melissa, before closing, could you ask to everybody to open the camera and make a group picture? <laughs> Thank you, Dominique. I did not think about that. Okay, so if you can still stick with us for a, a few, a one minute. Yeah, indeed, that's a good idea. Thank you, Dominique. But we have several pages. Yeah, that will take time if you need everyone. <laughs> Okay, and next page, I think. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> In. Okay, it's done now. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, yeah, I forgot to tell you Thank the you slides and recording will be sent to you by email. They will be available on the Federal website. And uh, after the last session, you will receive uh, a survey about this event. So please answer and tell us uh, if you enjoyed it and if you have comments. Have a nice day. Goodbye. Bye, have a good day. Thank you very much. Bye, Bye everyone. Joao Bye, and Livia, if you're still there, could you um, yeah. stay um, for a few seconds? Well, Thank you. Um, <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Yeah. I guess yeah, I can close the recording.